Team, keep it clean. Let's play a little game of how it started versus how it's going. How it started, Mark Andrews was balling this season once he finally got playing after week one. And at the point where he got hurt in that Bengals game, he was actually leading all tight ends in touchdown receptions. But then he went down, and it was said that, oh, man, Mark Andrews may miss the rest of the season. And we were all heartbroken. We were hurting. Uh, but then Harbaugh did give us a tiny bit of hope because he said there's an outside chance that Mark Andrews could return. So we held on to that for a long time. We were just hoping, hoping that we would get far enough and to give him the opportunity to come back. So then it got reported that Mark Andrews, uh, he was in the locker room with the Ravens, but he ain't have no crutches. So we were like, OK, OK, that's something. And that's some real positive news. And then a couple weeks later, it was reported that Mark Andrews, he's been running around and he's getting a little closer to feeling like he could come back. But we were like, oh, OK, cool. We're going to see. So then after that, it got reported Mark Andrews has been designated to return from injured reserve. And it was like, Whoa, hey, this is becoming real. It's becoming real. And then he was practicing. He started practicing and he was practicing in full. So we were thinking, oh, yeah, hey, he about to come back for that Texans game. Let's get it, baby. But Raven said, nope. But then today, the Baltimore Ravens made it official. This is big time official news for the Baltimore Ravens that Mark Andrews has been activated to the 53-man roster. So, Mark Andrews, even though we anticipated, we expected it, it's always different when it becomes official. And it's nice to have Mark Andrews, one of the best tight ends in the league, back. Team Keep It Clean, we got a lot to talk about in this video, but before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, which y'all have been doing. We're getting closer to 74,000 subscribers. It's going to take us a little minute to get there, but keep telling your friends and family about the channel, which I appreciate. Uh, leave a like on the video because it's been helping out the channel a lot. I appreciate y'all. Another thing that I really appreciate y'all is the way that y'all been showing love to everybody that we've been having come on here recently, too. Uh, we done had a lot of people over here on over the past couple of weeks, and hey, Ravens, keep this thing going so we can have a lot more team keep it clean right there two more games two more games it's crazy to just think back at the beginning of the season everything that we all talked about all the conversations that we done had all the questions from subscribers uh every single video that we made where we we conversated back and forth in the comment section with everybody about everything it is crazy that we are two games away from everything that we had hoped this baltimore ravens team achieved we two games away from them making it happen so they are literally right there. Big obstacle this Sunday at 3 p.m. at M&T Bank Stadium. But Ravens got more than enough to get the job done. And speaking of getting the job done, Mark Andrews, he got the job done when it came to returning. But topic of conversation has continued to be how should the Ravens move when it comes to Mark Andrews? How should they operate uh, with him and Isaiah Likely? Isaiah Likely has made uh, missing Mark Andrews a lot better. And what I mean when I say that, uh, with Mark Andrews being out, that's obviously a big blow. I mean, you lose one of your best players on a team, it's definitely going to be a big blow. But something that we talked about a couple days ago, depth. Depth has been crazy for the Baltimore Ravens this year, crazy in a good way, because they have lost a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys that they have lost for the entire season. Some have even played this season. But since the Baltimore Ravens created a roster with such quality depth, they were able to sustain those injuries. And with Isaiah Likely, he has stepped in, and he has just, he's gone off. Him and Lamar Jackson's chemistry is through the roof right now, and we love it. But now the question is, though, what do you do with Mark Andrews now, now that he's back? Because him and Lamar Jackson obviously got plenty of chemistry. Well, like I've continued to say, I still do believe, like, you stick with Isaiah Likely as your main tight end, as your top tight end. Uh, I, I can't see, especially the injury that Mark Andrews got, the one that he sustained just, what was that, October, I think? I don't see him that them throwing him back in. All right, Mark Andrews, you are number one tight end again. Next year, yeah, but right now, I don't think so. But I, I still think he gets his significant amount of snaps. He gets his significant amount of targets. And I, I think he'll make something happen. Because if he wasn't good enough to go, if he wasn't good enough to play, then there is no way that he should be out there. But the Baltimore Ravens, they've been handling business, especially injuries, the right way this year. So I expect Mark Andrews to not have any setbacks, no drawbacks, no issues, no none of that stuff. So I, I'm excited to see just how Todd Munkin uses both tight ends. And now the thing with this, because we didn't have this in the past. Remember, before with Greg Roman and even with Todd Munkin a bit, it, it, was, it was tough for uh, to get both tight ends going when he had both of them available. Um, but now with Lamar Jackson, something that's been big for Lamar Jackson 
he all he been had chemistry with Mark Andrews ever since 2018. Because them two, like Mark Andrews talked about today, they came into this thing together and they got some unfinished business that they got to take care of. And yes, y'all certainly do. So they've been had chemistry for a long time. But when Isaiah Likely came on the scene, him and Lamar chemistry wasn't there yet. But now it's there. It's there. So that makes them that much more dangerous. Shout out to my guy Matt. Uh, from Slice and Rice. Um, shout out to both of them. Shout out to him and Gloria, whole family. Love y'all. Love everything that y'all do. And I appreciate the heck out of y'all. Much love. But um, one thing that he uh, he talked about to me yesterday, um, he said that RG3, Robert Griffin the third, he was in a space and he made a really, really good point about Lamar Jackson when it came to the lack of running that he did uh, during the regular season. Now, me, y'all know, I was always somebody that said I, I, I could just tell Lamar Jackson was holding back from running. And I felt like it was more of a self-preservation thing, like he wanted to protect his, his body, protect himself as max as he possibly could. And I still think that is true, but he talked about how Robert Griffin brought out a different point. He said, well, Lamar Jackson, uh, he thinks that, that Lamar Jackson ran a lot less so he could build up even more chemistry with his wide receivers. So he could force himself to build up chemistry with his wide receivers. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I never thought of that before. Never, did, did not, that did not cross my mind. Not one time. I, I never would have thought, man. So the, that is just such a great point. And shout out to RG3. Obviously, he got some experience in the NFL and got some direct experience with Lamar Jackson himself and with the Baltimore Ravens as well. But that is something that, if true, I would assume it to be true because, I mean, we see it. Uh, it has paid big dividends to the Baltimore Ravens and their offense because Lamar Jackson, he has been putting that thing on the money, man. Um, the offense, the team, they are peaking at just the right time. <laughs> like he talked about, oh, yeah, they're they, they doing it. They're executing it. They're getting that job done. But specifically with Lamar Jackson, just the, the leaps and bounds that he's grown this year, it, it's, it's been amazing to see. So with Lamar Jackson, just the growth, the chemistry, the rapport uh, with all of his past catches, it's on another level right now. But – Something that was also on another level was a former Baltimore Raven, technically. I mean, he was here for a little bit. It wasn't here for too long, but former Baltimore Raven, technically, he felt like he said, do we even need Mark Andrews? <laughs> when I saw that, I said, we? We? You been repping Philly this whole time and talking about Eagles this? Fly Eagles, fly and whatnot, and you play for multiple teams. You play for the Eagles. You play for the Ravens. You play for the Raiders. You play for the Washington Commanders, too. And you don't see you talking nothing about none of them, but I, I get it. With Philly, you got special ties with Philly. I get that, and I respect it. But Ravens, we? I don't know about we, and that person I'm talking about is Deshaun Jackson. Now, Deshaun Jackson. Remember when the Baltimore Ravens first signed Deshaun Jackson? Uh, it was crazy because Ravens were in, they needed, a, they needed a receiver help. And that's something that, oh boy, as a Ravens fan, that is something that we would say literally every single year because it was pretty much like that every single year. But anyway, um, they needed receiver help. Deshaun Jackson was on a podcast. They hadn't reached out to Deshaun Jackson, nothing. Deshaun Jackson went on a podcast, I Am Athlete. Said that he would love to play with Lamar Jackson and Baltimore Ravens. And he listed a couple other teams too. What happened, like a couple days later, Ravens said, hey, what's up, big head? We heard what you said on the podcast. Come through. Come, 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 come be a Baltimore Raven. And he came through. He became a Baltimore Raven. Uh, it didn't last very long, but he was there nonetheless. But anyway, uh, with Deshaun Jackson, uh, let's look at what he had to say. He said, no disrespect uh, to Mark Andrews, but do we, put a little asterisk on that, but anyway, do we really need him to win? So, <laughs> And, and, of course, what he was saying was with Isaiah Likely, how he's been balling and whatnot, and how the Ravens have really been balling overall as a team, is Mark Andrews really a necessity in order for them to win? Now, um, I would say no. I would say no, but at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and complain that an all-pro tight end is returning to the Ravens lineup. That one of their best players on the team is returning to the line. One of the best players in the NFL at their position is returning to the line. Why, why would we complain about that? That would make no sense. It, it's been, we've been through so many Ravens teams to where we lost weapons, where we lost guys for the season, and we wish that they were able to come back. So to be complaining about having an extra weapon, having an additional weapon, that is a, a primary target of Lamar Jackson, and that has continued to show like, hey, oh, that boy is special. 
No. We ain't about to complain over that. Or do, do we really need it? No, man. Mark Andrews, you are more than welcome back. And, and he knows that. We all know that. I know when Mark Andrews comes out the tunnel uh, this Sunday at about 2.50 p.m., Oh, M&T Bank gonna be going crazy, and I, 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 oh man, I can't wait to see all the videos and everybody pictures and stuff. Oh man, I'ma just, I'm, I'm sure I'ma get chills uh, when I see it. So I look forward to that. But um, that's it's never a bad thing when you get a great player back. So Deshaun Jackson, I, and, and I get it. I, there's a little more context involved, but still, like the way he put that, I just, you don't even need context with the, you like to, to the wording and the thought. I get the thought process behind it, but Again, you're getting a great player back. Who will complain over that? Why, why not? But anyway, team, keep it clean. This is going to be a fun game. Ravens, they, uh, they done upped their game for this one, too. They making it real special for y'all that are going to be going to the game. You got like 50 million Ravens that are going to be there. Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, I think Terrell Suggs is going to be there. We have Anquan Bowden, Dennis Pitt are going to be there. And I know there's some more that, I, that I'm missing out on. Um, but it's going to be a lot of people there. T-Pain, like... The closest thing that the Baltimore Ravens had at the halftime show that I can remember, um, well, they don't had Nelly, but then they also had Outkast at the, uh, well, they had Big Boy from Outkast at the um, at the Thursday Night Football game this year. But T-Pain, so they stepping it up. They stepping it up. Ravens had to make some phone calls, and they they, they really stepping it up. But um, so I like it. So uh, they, they, they really, it's, it's going to be crazy there, man. It is really going to be crazy there. So I, I, I'm happy for all y'all that are going to be there. I, I try one last swing. I, I shot my shot with the Ravens because they tweeted out something today. They were like, oh, anybody, well, if you want to try to enter this contest to win some tickets straight from Baltimore Ravens, <laughs> I put in my information quick. But I know <laughs> once they see, <laughs> they see oh, oh, him? <laughs> nah, we ain't doing nothing for that guy. But it's, 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 all, it's all good, baby. So um, I, I'm looking forward to it, though. I'm looking forward to this game. And I'm looking forward to the Ravens continuing to handle their business.